Hi, this is Cody at the Oxford Rug Hooking School and today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to assemble and whip your catch-all boxes. Mix a 50-50 glue water solution to paint around the perimeter of your box along the dotted line. This is going to need to be dry uh, at least 24 hours prior to cutting and it's going to prevent any fraying as you're working and, and whipping your box together. Steam press your catch-all box on both sides. This will prevent it from curling as you're trying to work with it. You want to cut it out on the dotted line. And now we're ready to whip stitch. So I take a piece of yarn about an arm's length and I load up a dull tapestry needle. Here I'm doing what I like to call an anchor stitch. I go through the middle of the monk's cloth and I leave a small tail. That way I'm going to create something that I can whip around uh, and not worry about my stitches coming out. Typically, when you're doing a whipped stitch, you are going around the edge of a piece. Here, we're just covering up exposed monk's cloth. So it's very similar to the satin stitch in embroidery. Uh, you're just going to place your stitches close together, hiding all of the exposed monk's cloth. I started uh, right before the corner because I'm lining myself up. Uh, once I get around the entire perimeter of the box, I'm going to need to start going up the edges for the corners, so this will set me up nicely. Now whipping around the corner can be somewhat tricky, but it's really not too difficult. Um, I am just fanning out my stitches, so instead of having them be parallel to each other, I am working in one hole and then fanning out my stitch as I go along the corner. So here's a closer look at what I'm doing at the corner. As you can see, I'm going to work my stitches along the corner in a fan direction. I do not want to catch the edge of the monk's cloth because even though we've glued that edge, it can still come apart and fray. So I'm being very careful to push my needle close to the edge, but not on the edge, fraying the monk's cloth. And I'm just working my way around in a fan-like motion with my stitches until I reach the edge of the corner. And here is how the finished corner looks. And now I can continue to whip around in parallel stitches. As you can see here, I ran out of yarn. So what happens when you run out of yarn, you need to start new. I'm just gonna take the small tail of the yarn, I'm gonna push it through my previous whipping, and I'm just gonna hide it. Then I'm going to cut it flush, grab a fresh piece of yarn, and start whipping again. Just gonna take my yarn and pull it all the way through my previous whipping. And I'm gonna leave an, a little tail inside of there to kind of act as an anchor. And then I'm gonna continue to keep whipping around in those parallel stitches all the way around the box. Now that I've made my way around the entire perimeter of the base of the box, I want to set myself up to start whipping the corners of the two panels together. So I'm going to feed my yarn underneath the previous whipping to hide the yarn, and then I'm going to take the two panels and I'm going to sandwich them together putting those two pieces of exposed monk's cloth together so I can start whipping around that very easily. You change direction and you just push your needle through both pieces of monk's cloth as close as you can to your uh, punching and you're going to whip around just like you would with any whipped edge. 
I'm taking special care to position my yarn and hold it just where I want that loop so no exposed monk's cloth peeks out in between my loops. Now I'm going to work my way up the entire side of this box. until I get to the very top. Once I've reached the top of where my punched edge ends, I'm going to stop and I'm going to hide the tail and trim it flush. And I'm going to begin whipping along the next side of the box. Once again, by sandwiching the two pieces of cloth together, pushing my needle through a couple of inches or at least a half an inch of previous whipping and then whipping around those two pieces of exposed monk's cloth to attach those two panels together, whipping it all the way up to the very top. Now you can see that I have a somewhat assembled box and I want to do the same thing with the third side. Just once again, putting those two panels together, taking my needle, putting it through the previous whipping and whipping up that side of the box. Once you've whipped up that fourth and final edge, you're going to need to reposition yourself to start whipping around the top of the box. So the first stitch that we're going to do is going to be right underneath that last bit of whipping on the corner. That's going to create an anchor for this corner stitch. The corner is probably the most delicate part of the box. and We want to make sure that we're catching that last whipped edge loop so it will create a sturdy backing for the loops that we're creating along the other way. And I'm taking special care to make sure that my yarn is positioned in the right spot so I don't leave any exposed monk's cloth and I'm just going to work along that edge. Now sometimes you're going to need to overlap your stitches, that's okay. Uh, it might create a little bit of bulk, but we don't want a bunch of excess bulk, so try to avoid overlapping a bunch. Try not to overlap a lot, just enough so you create a sturdy corner. Once you've reached the edge of the corner, you can just continue to whip around like you would with any other whipped edge. So here's a closer look of how I'm doing that corner. As you can see, I'm putting my yarn needle right underneath that last loop of the corner whipping, pulling it all the way through and making sure that it's anchored properly, taking special care to position that yarn so there's no exposed monk's cloth and it's sitting in straight little rows right next to each other. So you're going to want to work around the entire perimeter of the box, whipping along that edge, taking special care on those corners, and once you have reached your start point, you're going to end it just the way we do with all ends, as we're going to take about a half an inch to an inch of that excess yarn. We're going to push it underneath our previous whipping and then just cut it flush. And now you have a nice little catch-all box that you can put all sorts of items in. Follow along with all of our Oxco Pals punch-alongs. Hashtag Oxco Pals and show us your work. We'd love to see it.